too many people right now are waiting to go viral and think yes. that will be the solution to their problems. If you are sitting there and waiting and not taking action, you are not frankly spending money to make money, you're not going to get anywhere. And I know how terrifying it can be to spend money if you're not bringing in that much money. But when you think about what the ROI will be three months, six months, two years down the line, you're going to make all of that back and more. Introducing the Vixen Voice a podcast for ambitious women entrepreneurs ready to move into their feminine essence, live their truth, and unlock their full potential. I'm your host, April Roberts, and each week I'll be interviewing inspiring women who decided to take a leap of faith to pursue their dream. Women who believe that they were born for something bigger. Hey there, just popping in quickly. It's April Roberts, and I wanted to thank you for being a loyal listener of The Vixen Voice. It means so much to me. And because of that, we're going to be popping in these little announcements because I want you to be the first to know what's going on at The Vixen Gathering. So if you haven't done so yet, click the link below and check out The Vixen Founders Collective. The members who are already in are raving, and we would love to have you join us and the ultimate business consulting, networking, and personal growth community for Gen X female founders. See you there. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Vixen Voice. I'm just going to warn you right now, stop whatever you're doing and pay attention because this episode is going to be on fire. So I have Ashley Chanel here with me. She is a 15-year digital marketer. How many of us are trying to figure out digital marketing? Yes, ma'am, it's time to listen. And she is the CEO of Make Your Mark Digital Marketing Academy. And we also have Emma Barrera, who is CEO of Right Hand Glam, the engagement agency and founder of the Engagement Academy. So we are talking all things marketing, lead flow, ads, all of those most frustrating parts of your business today. So I know you're going to want to listen and I'm sharing it's going to be on fire today because I just met these two lovely ladies. My podcast manager, Haley, knows them and we were having such an amazing conversation backstage that I cannot wait to bring it to you. So we're going to jump in here. Ashley, I'm going to ask you to share with us first. Tell us a little bit more about what you do at Make Your Mark Digital Marketing Agency. So what do you do and how do you serve your clients? And even who's a typical client? So I have clients across the board. But the main thing I want everyone to know is that I believe that when women are paid, the world changes. And... In my agency, I help entrepreneurs, experts, local service, service providers get to their first or next few million. And we do that through paid advertising as well as other organic options. But my main thing is I don't want you to work harder than you have to to reach the same result. I don't believe that you have to do anything organic first in order for your free to grow your business. In fact, I was making $47,000 in my business and I started ads because I was like, I'm not here to be working harder than I have to. This organic stuff is not for me. So I want to, I don't want to do this because it, it just felt like so much, but yeah. we do ads, we help you with social media. But a lot of what I do is the CMO, mark, your, your chief marketing officer strategies, your ad strategies, and then just helping you with your lead magnet because a lot of times our lead magnets aren't leading anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I would agree with that. And I love everything you said. Thank you so much. And Emma, share with us, what do you do for your clients and who's your ideal client? Yes. So like Ashley, we don't have a specific ideal client. We it's I'm 26. So this is going to make sense when it comes out of my mouth. We work with people sort of based on vibes. If they are trusting of us, if they respect us, if they are bringing a lot of energy, we know that they're going to match our team. We love purpose-driven entrepreneurs. 
we work with everybody from real estate agents to local companies. I live in a small town, so we're starting to work with some nonprofits in the area. We work with online service providers. We work with coaches. There's really no end to what we do inside the agency. We were actually the first engagement agency. And for people who aren't quite sure what engagement is, the way I explain it to people who are not in the online space, who are not entrepreneurs, is I say we log into our clients' accounts, we pretend to be them, and we support them in selling their offers. And that looks different every day. For some people, we are going through consistent funnels that we've built organically inside Instagram, LinkedIn, or Facebook. Other people, it is simply building relationships and connecting with people over time so they can be nurtured through your lead generation process. And again, like I said, that looks different on everyone. But there are a few other legs of our business. So like I said, we have our agency, which is Right Hand Glam. I offer one-on-one -on -one mentorship. I've also been called the queen of the pop-up offer. I've been known to pull 10 grand out of thin air with pop-up offers, which I love talking about. And then lastly, we have the Engagement Academy, which I took our entire business and I now give women the tools, tech, and tenacity to add engagement to their product suite using our exact system strategies and SOPs. So when I say I packaged my business, I mean I took all of our templates, all of our onboarding, all of our offboarding, all of our client communications, all of our strategies, and put it together in one digestible course that originally was for social media managers and VAs who wanted to scale their product suite. But now we have the honor of working with a lot of women who are looking to transition out of the corporate space into the online space or who want to start a side hustle. I love it. I love it. And I love that you have the SOPs ready to go because I yeah. know so many of my clients struggle with that part of the business. And and to be honest, at the beginning, you don't know what SOPs you need until you figure mm -hmm. out your business and you figure out what marketing is going to work. And what I love you've done is I always say, okay, you, you hire a coach or you hire a consultant to learn from their tuition, right? My grandfather always called it tuition, the money, time, energy, and heartache that you put into figuring something out, right? So basically when our clients hire us, they're trying to compress that and learn from our tuition, right? And 100%. so you have it like packaged and ready to go for them. So I Absolutely. love that. That's beautiful. And I know we were talking about this before we came on air. And Ashley, this is a pet peeve of yours a little bit, right? Because it, it, we do want to learn from others' tuition, but we don't want people to tell us like scary horror stories that like stop us from trying things. So can you share with us, you were sharing a challenge that you hear from a lot of potential clients or clients? Yeah, the horror stories. And it's all the marketing horror stories and just life horror stories in general. I want to I want to ask the listeners a question. When is the last time you got through something that someone told you that you couldn't get through or you did something mm -hmm. that came out amazing but someone else said that they tried it and they couldn't do it. The thing is is that I understand that sometimes people are well-meaning sometimes, but regardless of if they're well-meaning or not, their horror stories and their life experiences do not d dictate yours. And mm -hmm. I remember I was I went to the University of Houston and we had and might still have the number one entrepreneurship program in the country. Mm -hmm. And there were only 30 spots available. And I asked a veteran or I told a veteran who was in one of my classes that I was applying. And he said, well, you have to have a business because I applied and I didn't get it. And, and I didn't have a business. I was in college. I was freaking 19 years old. So, I mean, and, you know. At the time, I didn't have a business and I was just, you know, enjoying college. But entrepreneurship was something that I always wanted to do. So I applied and I got in and I was one of 30 spots. And one of those 30 spots, we our class was one of the schools that was that was invited to eat dinner with Warren Buffett and go to his um, shareholders meeting. And that sent me on the trajectory because had I not gotten into that program, I wouldn't have met. I cannot remember her name right now, but she was a dancer and she invited me. She said that she was going to Italy for a post bachelorette program because we had at that point we were graduating. We were finished, but it was post bachelorette. I went to Italy and that moment changed my life. That was a pivotal moment in my life where I realized my life could look 
any way that I wanted it to look. But had I let the horror story of the, of him not being able to get in and me saying, oh, well, I don't have a business. I'm not going to apply. Are you kidding? I wouldn't have made living in Italy my whole personality. I mean, it isn't really, but I am, Italy is my home. I used to live in Rome. I lived there for two years when I got my MBA and living there showed me that my life could look any way I wanted to. And then as I go through business, I have heard more horror stories than any of you have heard listening about ads and how ads mm -hmm. have ruin people's business or they don't work or I know two people who have spent $15,000 on a fee only not including the ad spend and spent one one spent 11,000 on ad spend and all the leads she got none of them were good leads and then another one spent 15,000 and however much she spent in ad spend and she didn't get any leads or sales so just because that happened to them doesn't mean it will happen to you. And a lot of times it's either use your error when it comes to ads, which is almost every single time, or the person who's running your ads doesn't know what the heck they're doing. Yeah, I love everything you said for so many reasons. Number one, I love when people tell me I can't do something because I like have to prove them wrong. I don't know what it is about me. I've been like that since college, but you tell me I can't do something and we're going to figure it out, right? I mean, if it makes sense. And and actually, I'd love to share a way a friend of mine just shared with me to like really to look into if this makes sense or not. So I love that. Second, as you said, you know, the veteran shared that for you and, and then you applied anyway it took you to Italy which changed your life I mean we have to remember we're all on our own journey right we're all perfectly Absolutely. imperfect and different for a reason because we're all here to go on a different journey so we want to yeah. honor our journey and I really I feel entrepreneurship I've now been an entrepreneur since 2008 so that's you know 16 years if I'm doing the math right and it is the greatest self growth or personal growth and self-discovery oh journey that you can go on right i mean Absolutely. i i i am going on a very deep spiritual journey now and that's a roller coaster but i'm prepared for it because i'm an entrepreneur right mm -hmm. i'm ready so if you choose this path it is a journey it is a roller coaster right and each of our journeys look different and another thing i see is sometimes you're at the beginning of your journey and you're comparing you yourself to someone 16 years down the road or five years down the road or even if it's your first year you're not going to know what the heck is going on i hate to tell you that but it just is the truth right like yeah. it would be amazing to have it all figured out out the gate but it's going to take a good year for you to say oh okay here's what I should be doing. Here's where my clients are. Here's where I should pay attention, right? So even one year can make such a difference in that journey. And and finally, I, I can tell you my horror stories about ads and we are now successfully running ads, but we'll get to that later. But Ashley, I too lived in Italy. So I lived in Milan for two and a half years. Oh so God. I get it. <laughs> yes. I love that. <laughs> love it's it. the best place ever. I know, I know. So Emma, how about you? What are some things that maybe you hear that you'd like to correct, either from clients, friends, fellow entrepreneurs? I think for me, it's uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is timelines. So yeah. with engagement in particular, I always try to explain to people that the longer you are with us, the more success you are going to have. Our contracts are three month minimums, like many people's are. Mm -hmm. And in a perfect world, they'd be six months, but people are a little too scared for that in this economy, which I'm, I'm okay with and I respect and I understand. Um, yeah. But a big thing for us is data. So every single time we talk to someone, we put them into a data tracker. So we know when we talk to them, what we talk to them about, exactly how to find them. And I always like to share this story in particular. I had a client that was with us for eight months. And mm -hmm. in her eighth month with us, she launched a group program. And about a week and a half into the launch, she had only sold three spots. And she was like, Emma, why is this not working? And I said, my love, it's tax season. And you cannot mm -hmm. sell a $3,500 program on April 1st. It's just not going to work. And she said, okay, what are we gonna do? I have this goal of $50,000 for this launch, which was a very normal goal for her. And we're only at 11. 
And I was like, let me go to my data. So I went back through eight months of data mm -hmm. and I started messaging people who had indicated months earlier, I want to work with you in the next four to six months, or I want to work with you in the new year, you know, please check mm -hmm. in with me. And because we had been working on so many other things, we didn't get a chance to do that. So I start going back through the data and I start messaging people. And it was the simplest of messages. It was like, hey, mm -hmm. last time we chatted, you were working on X, Y, Z. How did that go? And all of a sudden, all of these people were like, oh my God, I've been waiting to reach out to you. I have been meaning to reach out to you and I need you like yesterday. And within another week and a half, we had turned $11,000 into $47,000. So that would not have happened had she only been with me for a minimum three month contract. Yeah. And so people need to understand that right now, lead time, if you're doing organic lead generation is a lot longer than it used to be. We're talking yeah. four or five, six months, whereas three years ago, you're looking at four to six weeks. So that's a huge change over the past few years. And so I always have to tell people to be patient and that most importantly, when you work with someone who does lead generation for you, or even if you're doing it yourself, the one thing you cannot do is make someone swipe a credit card. You can get them to the point where they are saying they are ready to, but you cannot physically reach through the screen and make them swipe it. So patience is a huge part of the organic process, mm -hmm. but also understanding that you need to lead with your data, which comes in a million different versions, whether that be your email list or past clients or abandoned carts or current clients who you might be able to sell on something else. And it's really just leaning back on that data, having patience and understanding that, especially in this economy, it is a long game. No, I agree with that. And I, I'm a huge fan of engagement. And I know we're going to talk ads with Ashley because Ashley wants to get, get results quicker. And I totally agree with both. The reason I like engagement is I feel it's a very humane way of touching people because yes. you can pull them in from the ads. And so I had a lot of my clients in my Vixen Founders Collective and they're like, oh my gosh, how do you like do this engagement? I'm like, you just show up as a human being. Like, I don't know, exactly. this just, and then I did a check-in this week with one of those members. She's been with me two months and I was like, hey, what's been the biggest change? She was like, oh my gosh, my lead flow has significantly increased. I'm like, okay, what's significant? 20, 30, 50%? And she was, no, it's quadrupled. <laughs> and I'm like, just yeah. because she listened to me like daily engaging and like sticking with it and you know, the funny thing is her first goal was, okay, I'm going to engage with one person a day. This is how resistant she was. She was like, her goal wow. was to DM one person a day. I'm like, I don't care. Just do it. Because I believe like small hinges swing large doors, right? You just have to get past yes. that. She told me the first day she ended up sending 50 DMs like to people on her Instagram wow. channel. And her sometimes. goal was one, right? Yeah. <laughs> so That's incredible. Yeah. Marketing is compounding. I, I want people yeah. to understand that regardless of what you're doing, whether it's organic, whether it's paid, eight months of data from ads is amazing yes. because one of the things that we want to make sure that we do is build your audience so that we can create lookalike audiences and retargeting mm -hmm. audiences. And the more that we do that, it's the, the better, the bigger your audience is and it's compounding. So if you don't get anything else from this episode, Emma, April and I are on the same page data driven decisions okay yes all always of, all of this emotion all of this oh well my friend did it my coach did it we don't care what does your data say because your data mm -hmm. is going to turn going to determine how much money that you're able to make how many people you're able to reach and how many yes. lives you're able to change there's also no. one more angle of this that i want to make sure that we we talk about which is many chat i think it's so important to yes. talk about this right now because everybody's using it mm -hmm. and something that i've noticed in bringing the human back into marketing is you get all of these wonderful leads from many chat you get these people opting in but you also get people opening your message and not doing it and what mm -hmm. i found is that in our clients that use many chat we are seeing a much higher conversion when we go in with an actual follow-up, yes. because when you're looking at Instagram, you can physically see the difference between a many chat message and an actual message. 
And so we'll mm -hmm. have people go, oh my gosh, wait, it's you, it's me. But like, you know, oh my gosh, it's you. This is so exciting. Like you're really here. And it's like, yes, we want to hold space. We want to ask you what your biggest takeaway was. We want to ask you where you need more support. Do you need accountability? And yeah. that helps us really get to the sale. It's wonderful to have your people in your funnels. It's important to have people in your funnels. However, it is your Instagram funnel that truly can make you the most money I have found. I agree. And I, I'm so glad you brought this up. It's so crazy. I just had a conversation about mini chat yesterday. I was on, you know, it, let's call it a sales call with a prospective client. But the way I do sales calls is I'm like, hey, what's your biggest challenge? Okay, let me help you solve this while we're on here. And then we'll talk about if you want to work together. Because I'm like, this is 30 minutes of your day. You're a busy entrepreneur. I'm a busy entrepreneur. Let's get value out of this 30 minutes, right? And it got down to she was like, yeah, because she had met me through Instagram and she was like, do you use mini chat? I said, we do have mini chat. The engagement with you was not mini chat. That was organic, but we do use mini chat for like, Hey, DM, if you want our 20 page business plan and they DM Vixen and then, you know, that's automatically sent and then the follow up. But then a real person is coming in and engaging with you. And it's usually me because I actually really like to do it. And I like to see how they're responding because it helps me know how to help my clients better, right? Like, I can't wait until soon I'm going to call you Emma and say, hey, take this over. Here's why. I love your energy. Be careful with who you hire because I do have people who do outreach for me on LinkedIn because for some reason, I'm just not a fan of LinkedIn. It doesn't give me the energy that Instagram me does. Neither. I don't know. Mm -mm. But I mean, there are tons of amazing women on LinkedIn, so I still want to connect with them, right? So again, I'll hop in and start taking over. But I do have people that do like cold outreach for me on LinkedIn. I have noticed, let's say they'll get one in 10 on my calendar when I get get a bug in my bonnet and say, I'm going to go in and engage, I get three or four out of 10 on my calendar, right? And it can almost be the same message, but it's my energy coming through. And so this mm -hmm. is what I, you know, I've done episodes about AI, et cetera, but this is one thing I fear with AI is, you know, it's lacking that human connection, the human energy. And so it's just going to show up differently. But you got to be smart. You obviously, we as business owners cannot be in DMing and engaging everyone. So we either hire someone like Emma to help us that we feel mirror our energy, our values and what we're trying to accomplish. Or we hire someone like Ashley, who's going to go help us automate or speed this up with ads, right? And I actually think having a blend of the two is really ideal. And hey, if you're listening going, April, that sounds great, but I just started. I can't afford all this. I get it. Go freaking do it yourself and keep the data because you're going to learn so much. So Ashley, I want to give you a chance to respond to this conversation because I can see the wheels spinning in your head. <laughs> they are. Can you see them? Are my eyes yes. just going all over the place? Oh my. <laughs> because I'm thinking about number one, buying courses is totally fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you think about you buying a course, you are buying a course for a skill. Yeah. A lot yes. of times people do not understand how to teach strategy through a course. And that mm -hmm. is okay. As long as you can manage your expectations. Okay. It's to me, that's just so important because I think a lot of people take courses to have transformations and these whole life changes, which depending on the course, it might be, but when you're looking at marketing, it, it goes from you needing to learn a skill because you need to keep costs down. You need to do it yourself because you have more time than money to, okay, I have some time and I have some money. Let me see who I can help bring in. And typically that's a time where you bring in someone to help you with strategy, understanding where you are, and then being able to give you some type of information and guidance. Because a lot of times what you need and what most of us need is yeah. more guidance than information because information in my opinion should not necessarily be gate kept or in what i mean by that is agree locked behind a, a form you don't need a lot of times the information that is going to be helpful and help people understand that you are the the expert mm -hmm. you need to say it out loud on your social media in your ads and that's mm. what i do with my clients is because i'm a marketer 
I'm a marketer first. Okay. I'm not an ads person first. I am a marketer first. And Mm -hmm. what that means is that I work with my clients and we, we have a content day when we work together and we, I tell them what content they need to create so that our ads can make sense and we can get people because when, when we do videos, we're not just doing 30 second videos. I don't do, I don't hop on trends for my clients. We can, but generally speaking, we do videos that are three to 10 to 20 to 45 minutes and we run them as ads. That sounds weird. A lot of people don't do that, but what we're trying to do is get people who are interested in what you're saying and watching it either 25%, 50% or all the way through so that we can retarget those people, not the people who watched it for three seconds, not even the people who watched it for 15 seconds because we didn't stay till the end. We want people who are engaged and interested in what you're talking about. And then even in the the mini chat conversation, you'll see Mm -hmm. a lot of people talking about comment this or DM, you know, you have to think about, and you wouldn't know this. And I, I do want to preface this by saying, you are not supposed to know how to do any of this. Okay. No. I went to Amen, school. Amen, Ashley. <laughs> Mic drop. I like, agree. Stop the episode <laughs> there. That's it. You don't need to know how to do this. Like, you're but not supposed to Hold know. on. Can like, I you... jump in here? I yeah. do want to warn people to know enough to be dangerous because you have yes. to know if you're talking to someone who actually knows what they're talking about like these right. women do or not mm. because there are so many people promising that they can make, deliver these goods. And unfortunately, that's part of tuition because you're going to get burned a couple of exactly. times and then you're going to realize, oh, I should have asked this question. So yes, you don't yeah. need to know how to do this, but educate yourself enough or ask the right questions so that you can evaluate the job that the marketer's doing. So sorry, Ashley, hop back no, in. No, <laughs> what I'm saying is that you're not, you, you, you're not supposed to know how to do this yeah. when you go into your business. What mm-hmm. I, but you should, yes, you absolutely do need to educate yourself. But one of the things I've said is that I feel like I haven't hired a bad coach and that's because yeah. I pay attention Agreed. to not only what they say, but I pay attention to their actions. Just because mm-hmm. someone can screenshot something doesn't necessarily mean it's true. People can fabricate testimonials, et cetera. But, and, and a lot of times you won't know until you start working with someone, but you can see what their values look like on the internet. Mm-hmm. How do they show up? How do they interact with people? But what I mean is you're not supposed to know how to do this yet. But you do need to figure out, you do need to maybe watch some YouTube videos, get some information and ask people like Mm -hmm. when Emma was talking about the human side, you, this is, you're not building a business in, in a, in a silo. Talk to people. You have to talk to people, but just to get back on track, just as far as like the ads, ads are there to, they're not there to sell for you. Ads Mm -hmm. are not there to sell for you. They are there to garner interest and they are there to get people to click. Your sales process, your lead magnet needs to be amazing. And I have I have a higher threshold. I think if you are not getting 30% conversion from your ads, then there's something going on with your lead magnet, whether it's the title or the offer. Then you go into, mm-hmm. if you're doing webinars, are people showing up? If they're showing up, are they staying to the end? If they're staying to the end to listen to your pitch, because if they show up and they don't stay till the end, nobody heard your pitch. Mm -hmm. And is your pitch okay? And then are you getting people to the sales page? Does your sales page track or convert? Or are you closing on your sales calls? What's your conversion rate? So Mm -hmm. it's not just ads are not this thing where it's like, oh my goodness, I run ads and everything's going to work. No, yeah. you do need to have some piece of something that works and ads allow you to g- gather data so fast so that you can make data-driven decisions quickly. And I'm talking about within a week. Like, And, and I really mean within three days, you can determine if your ad, if your, if your lead magnet title is even good and then yeah. change the title and then see what happens is make sure that everything is you know, working well, but there's so many things I could talk about. I, uh, but oh my goodness, <laughs> that is fine. I, but, yeah. and actually, I love that you, you talk about the, the webinar data, for example, because yeah. when people talk to me, they're like, well, what kind of data do you need? And webinar data is actually something we use really well. Something I tell everybody. And if you are not doing this, pause this episode right now and go do it. You need to have Instagram handle as an option on every single opt-in you have because how what Ashley does and what I do can be married together is Ashley Mm -hmm. could say, okay, here is the webinar data export. And I would look at people probably who stayed for a minimum of 40%, maybe even 30% 
And I would go onto Instagram because we have their Instagram handle and follow up with them and say, hey, I saw you caught part of the webinar. What did you think? What was your biggest takeaway? And if they're like, oh, well, I wasn't able to stay the whole time, let's send them the link again. Let's get them to watch it again. And then a few days later, another follow-up. Hey, did you get a chance to watch it now? Oh my gosh, yes. These were my biggest takeaways. Okay, now, where can I help you? Where can we fill these gaps? Um, where can we make you more money? And I, I just love how ads work in tandem with organic engagement. So for people out there listening mm-hmm. who are like, wait, do I need to pick one or the other? No, and you absolutely should not. You just need to know that if you're going to go with ads first, engagement needs to come right after. And as quickly as these changes are being made with ads, the changes need to be made with your organic engagement. Yeah. yeah. And manually. I mean, if you have to show up manually, do it manually at the end Absolutely. of the day. As yes. far as the webinar, oh my goodness, I feel like we could be on here for five hours. But as far <laughs> as the webinar, I want you to know, please stop doing things just because everyone else has done them. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people put their webinar playback where you cannot either increase the speed because baby, when I tell you, I am listening to Loom videos and YouTube on 2.5 Two X. times. Me too. <laughs> no, Me baby, too. I'm not sitting, yeah. I'm not sitting. I don't through have your, the time. Yeah, I'm not sitting through your 90 minute webinar and you might not even need a webinar. You might need a VSL. But my point is that don't put the player up there where we can't go through it. Because at the end of the day, that's mm-hmm. telling you if people are dipping out of your webinar early, that's because you're not keeping their attention. And at the beginning, everybody tells you, you know, have slides about yourself. You're talking about yourself too much. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Cause nobody cares until they know that you actually know what you're talking. Nobody cares about your story until they know what you know, until they know that you know what you're talking about. And that mm. they both- also, when I, I mean, I grew my financial practice through dinner seminars. So no one cares about you until they know that you care. Like, that's the way exactly. we say it. Like, you know. fed them? Oh my goodness. Yes. I love, I love to be fed. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And that was my joke at the beginning. Like I made a joke. I was like, Hey, look, here's a couple of rules. Like number one, I, and it was like, you know, fun. And then I'd be like, you know, number three, like laugh at my jokes. If you're back there in the corner, no falling asleep, <laughs> like, you know, this really helps me. And I would be like, Hey, look. And I, cause I, Oh, cause to lead it, I'd be like, yeah, I have the saying I get by with a little help from my friends. Do you know who my friends are tonight? And I'd be like, you guys, do you know why? dead silence because i'm paying for dinner and then everyone's laughing like in the first Love five that. minutes like it's off the table and it's like okay at the end of the night you get to decide if we're going to stay friends or not and that's how we're going yeah. in but yeah you got to know these things about people i totally agree with you oh my gosh i love that you said that ashley because i have one slide at the beginning because I feel it's obligatory and it's like your guide for today and it's like key points about why I'm talking to you right like because I'm like I don't want to talk about myself I'm here to make a difference in your life like let's freaking go like let's go like we don't need to build this up I love that one more thing I want to point out because I think this is genius especially in the current environment because I do follow the trends a lot and we're working through our own marketing is I love how you said you do 10 20 20, 30, 40 minute videos. And those are your ads because right now people are bombarded and they're like, do I want to show up for this webinar or not? Like, is it worth my time? And so I love that you're giving more of your client to begin with because number one, they know, okay, this person, yeah, I'm vibing with this person. Let me get some more. And you know, number two, they have more skin in the game than a 30 second ad where they clicked. And then, you know, later, Later, they're going to say, oh, do I actually want to show up for this webinar or not? Right. Because they only had 30 seconds in. So there exactly. is this. Yeah. So I'd love to hear your theory behind that, because I I actually that was something you said that I think is pretty genius that you're running right now. And I think it's mm-hmm. good for this time, because as Emma said, you know, it used to be seven touches. Now it's 15, which instead of like four yeah. to five weeks is four to five months. And this is the world we live in right now. And we, you just have to know and you have to know how to hack it and you have to try different things. Yeah. So Ashley, I'd love to hear your thinking behind that. And then Emma, I'd love to hear some tips from you. Like how do we overcome this four to five months or do we just need the patience mm. to hang in there? Right? So I, the first thing I want to say is that 
this is how you gather business acumen. So find the people who bring people on their podcasts who are the actual experts who care about you. And you can tell because I'm so passionate about this because marketing is hard. I don't care what yeah, anybody says. It is. Marketing is difficult because sure. we mentioned how many th platforms have we mentioned already? We've said yeah. LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Impossible. mini chat, bots, like an AI. So there's so many things that you could possibly be doing. And, and I, I think I said YouTube earlier. So just know that you don't have to do everything, but when you are, so the reason that we use, the reason that we have different videos, video links is because mm -hmm. you have to understand that there is an ebb, ebb and flow in business cycles. There are business cycles. I yes. want you all to look up oh. business, the different types of business cycles. And we don't just stay in one. We were in a freaking growth market during COVID, but yes. nobody talks to you about that because nobody knows. But the people who are in marketing, the people who pay attention, they understand what is going on in the economy. And regardless of the economy, people are still spending money, but mm -hmm. they, they kind of either pull back on certain things and spend more on others and vice versa, depending on what market we're in. We are now in a mature growth market, which means that in COVID, we could breathe and get paid. Yeah. Now th that's why that the, that's why the the length of time it, it takes to get a buyer, get some to say yes is longer because we're in a mature market and we will ebb and flow and move between them. We're not in depression, we're not, you know, things like that. Yeah. So the reason why I have videos of 3 minutes to 45 minutes is because right now it's so important for you to build trust and we always mm -hmm. say no like trust i'm telling you trust like then no because people need to trust that you know what you're talking about they need to trust your method of getting people to the promised land right so i say mm -hmm. you need to you need to tell people how you get people there what is your framework what is your methodology tell people that right now give people in an ad it can be three minutes. Give people three tips. Like say, if I were to start this over again, if I were to start my ads journey over again, these are the three things that I would do. Stay to the end. And I'm going to, you know, give you whatever, if you want to, if, if you even want to have a CTA at the end, you don't have to have a CTA call to action at the end of everything that you do. You can just give information. And mm -hmm. this is when people say give value. Cause somebody told me that the other day. And I was like, that is the most vague piece of advice anyone can ever give. <laughs> By the way, side note, if you are following coaches who tell you to give value, fire them because that is not real advice. But anyway, moving on because I could go on tangents on it. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so <laughs> the reason why we do three to 45 minute videos is because if you can give someone three tips, actionable tips that they can actually take and go use right when they're done with the three minutes, are you kidding? How valuable are you? Because nobody else is doing that. And this, yeah. it doesn't even have to be your ad. It could be just a video that you put out that one day you use for an ad because I'm all about, again, not rework, overwork, redundancy, unnecessary. Mm -hmm. So if you posted it on, on social media, we can run it as an ad, but it needs to be strategic. So three minutes there, you can do a seven, have a seven to 10 minute VSL video sales letter as your ad, because mm -hmm. why wait? Why put it behind a gate? Some people, because the thing is, is right now, you're trying to get the two to three percent of people who are ready to buy now to buy. That means that there are 97 to 98 percent of people who need 24 yeah. to 54 touch points. There are 67 percent of people who need multiple touch points to trust you and buy from you. Then there's another 33 percent who need a length of time to mm -hmm. trust you and buy from you. And the length of time is not determined by you, babe. It's determined by not how at they all. Feel. <laughs> so they can they can be in your they can be on your list for five years before yes. they even come to your event before they even re like respond and reply to your email that says reply back and da 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 da. So this is why it's so important for you to have content that is longer form, so people know that your framework. Because like Emma and I do two different things. We both help you make money, get leads, et cetera. Yes. She does it through organic and engagement. I do it through ads because I'm impatient. So <laughs> we both, the how we get you there is different. The result is very much the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Yeah. No, I, I love that. And again, I think it's a marriage of the two where you get ultimate success. And you're if you're listening and saying, hey, you know, I'm just starting out, I can't do it. Great. I hear you. Like, then pick one. Mm-hmm. Go, <laughs> you know, pick one and stay the course. Because, Emma, you're so right when you were talking about, like, length of engagement. So what I do is, because, I, I mean, I did marketing for so long building my financial business. And it was all direct mail, get them to a seminar, like, get them in the office, right? I mean, literally, I grew to seven figures with that one marketing channel. And then I was like, Oh, it might be fun to have a TV show. Okay, let's do a TV show. And that was our second channel of marketing. I mean, we live in a different world today. So it's it's hard, but you really do like perfect and then you fix each part. So like, I get it. But so what I'm doing is like, we changed our Instagram content strategy. And so I knew we started beginning of August, and I had this person I was like, I want to see what you've done for your clients. I looked at the numbers. I was like, okay, so it looks like most people peak after like two to three months. And he was like, yeah, I'd agree with that. So in my head, I'm like, okay, October, I'm really going to start seeing if this is working or not. But if, as far as numbers, like, you know, I mean, but our second video went viral. So that was awesome to have a quick win. But, you know, I know really like engagement and getting the numbers up, et cetera. But Here's what I've already noticed is people direct messaging me that know me because he's like, why aren't these going on your personal pages saying, hey, I didn't know you did this. I want to come work with you like people that I went to college with or law school or that I worked with in the past. And so... All I'm saying is as the business owner, you have to be tuned in. That's why I like reading the DMs and actually engaging with people because I'm like, okay, I don't expect this growth in numbers till October, but already because you put my content on my personal Facebook page, I've had two people reach out to me wanting to be clients. So I already see this is working, right? Now I just have to have the patience game to see the compounding effect of what we're doing. So, Mm. you know, if you're a business owner and you're not not doing the marketing, you still have to keep your eye on the ball and understand what's going on. And, and I love when you'll share data and information. And if the people you're working with are not giving you the appropriate data points or this information so that you can see, okay, this is working or this isn't, or, you know, if I hadn't seen that, I'd be like, Hey, you know, it's a little slower than I thought. And I'd have that conversation with the person helping me and I'd want them to explain to me what's going on. And so I just, just interviewed someone who's actually an advocate for cancer a lot more serious but she talks about be your own advocate question your doctors understand what's going on when you're a business owner like that's your lifeblood as well so like don't be afraid like you can do this gracefully because you want to have a nice relationship but don't be afraid to question and say hey I don't understand or I thought by now this would happen because it could be a misassumption on your side and when it gets fixed everything's fine I just want to say that this is twofold, like you said, with vetting people. Number yes. The one, one question you should ask is, what I do I need in place to be one of your success stories? Because yes. I've always said, I remember I was getting clients that I didn't like. And like, this is something that you also need to do in your content is tell people yep. what they need to have in place mm-hmm. that makes working with you helpful. Because I was getting clients that I would like, they were just expecting something. And I was like, well, it takes time. Like you need your funnel this, you need it. And it's like, well, why would they know, Ashley? Why would they know? You are the expert. You have to tell them what they need. And I can say all day, I help my client make $450,000 in one month. We spent $5,000 in ad spend, but you know what she had in place? X, Y, Z. And I have a video on it on my social media and it says 350 because I didn't realize she made 450. And she had her entire funnel, her lead, like all of these things in place. I won't go into it now, but it's like, I started saying people need to know. So I'm going to yes. let people know and give them an expectation of what they need in place before I can run ads for them and they can be successful because I am the queen of cold traffic when it comes to ads and I can, I can get you leads and I can make you money. But these are the things that you need in place. Someone said putting fuel in a car. Yeah. You're, you already have a car and it works. You just need to put fuel in it. So that's what I'm able to do. But I just want to let you know as a listener and for your own business, please don't hide that information and feel like it's going to keep you from getting clients and making money because at the end of the day, it actually brings you more clients because they're able to self-select and able to decide 
oh, she was honest with me. I know exactly what I'm walking into and mm-hmm. there aren't going to be any surprises instead of feeling like, oh crap, I need the money. I promise yeah. you those clients are going to be the worst because you did not mm-hmm. inform them. And I'm always going to put the onus back on you. So go ahead, Emma. But I just wanted to I, say well, that. Real quickly, I want to add because a big mistake I made last year and again this year, and it cost me a lot of money, was hiring ad companies that did the ads for big names who I knew. Like, I mean, top of the industry big names. So I'm like, oh, cool. I just have to write a check. You know what you're doing. Yeah. I wrote a lot of checks and I got zero clients in both instances. No, I got one client the second time, right? So, and you know, what I didn't understand because I was new to this game is, okay, these people already have large organic audiences. So almost anybody could drop a successful ad campaign, right? Like we're growing. Yes. A hundred thousand people on their list. They've got the... They've got the engagement, the the 50,000, 100,000 people right. who have engaged, who have sent messages, who have engaged, who have watched. So they can do lookalike audiences. They can do retargeting audiences with an ad strategy. So, yeah, I mean, and that it sucks that they didn't tell you that. It, it does suck. I know. Trust me, but I call it tuition. <laughs> I, I believe the past is the past. I live in the present. <laughs> We just move forward. <laughs> awesome. So Emma, please hop in here. Then I know we have to yeah, wrap up. Yeah, I want to go back. I want to go back to what you said about assumption. And I right now I'm running a mini mind called the Pop It Off Mini Mind, and it is for women who are looking to launch a pop up offer. And I knew what kind of person was not right for this. I so many people have followed me, and they've seen how much I've made from pop up offers. And uh, my coach calls them the peanut M M&M and M offers, the little things that you grab at checkout when you're loading your groceries onto the belt. And so many people were like, well, this is the solution to my problems. And I was like, "Uh, uh-uh. no, it's not the solution to your problems because you're assuming one, because it worked for me, it'll work for you. And two, you're assuming your audience even wants this. And so the yeah. first step that we took every single person inside was you need to ask your audience the right questions to see if they want or need this. You could have the best business mm-hmm. idea in the world. The idea that you think will make you a million dollars And if your people do not want it, you are wasting your time and likely you're wasting money because you're going to be investing in some kind of support to make it happen. I know you mentioned earlier, you know, what do we have to do about lead times? Do we just be patient when it comes to this three to six month cycle? Or is there something we can do about it? And something Ashley said, I think really hit the nail on the head, which is create as many touch points as possible. Mm -hmm. I have certain people that will never purchase my high ticket offers, but have purchased every small peanut M&M offer that I have put out there. And so creating multiple touch points, whether it be through freebies, engaging content, emails that really hit home, all of those things keep them warm in my pipeline. Mm -hmm. And three months, six months, two years from now, when they are finally ready to pull the trigger and make it happen, I know that I did everything in my power to keep them warm along the way because I was Mm -hmm. doing not only those things, but making a concerted effort to talk to them in the DMs. And it's actually funny because people sometimes will DM me and they'll be like, hi, Emma's team. And I'm like, no, no, it's just me. No one has the keys to the kingdom. You will always get me because I am so protective of my brand, of my voice. And I know what my people want after all of this time. I've had 200 people go through my program. I've served thousands of people all over the world through our various services. And I've had a thriving agency for four years. I know what people want. I know what Mm -hmm. people need because I've built a community. And that's Mm -hmm. why I will always be the person that is talking to my people. And that's not to say that you have to be like me and and gatekeep your own Instagram, right? We really pride ourselves on capturing voice. We have clients that come to us and are like, I literally did a double take because I thought I sent that message and we were like, nope, it was us. And there are strategic ways to master somebody else's voice. It takes time and patience on the client's part. There's always going to be, and I think this happens, you know, really for anybody that's working with a service writer, there's always a rocky two weeks. You're figuring each other out. Mm -hmm. You're figuring out the flow. You're figuring out the voice. I'm sure even the same with ads, but then you find it and then magical things start happening because you're finally putting the time and energy, someone else is doing it for you, into the things that are truly going to make you money. I think too many people right now 
are waiting to go viral and think yes. that will be the solution to their problems. If you are sitting there and waiting and not taking action, if you are not frankly spending money to make money, you're not going to get anywhere. And I know how mm -hmm. terrifying it can be to spend money if you're not bringing in that much money. But when you think about what the ROI will be three months, six months, two mm -hmm. years down the line, you're going to make all of that back and more because finally things are flowing to bring it back full circle to what this whole conversation was about, which is lead flow. Yeah, no, I love it. And, you know, even if you are outsourcing your engagement, inspect what you expect, right? You should be popping in there mm. and seeing what's going on. And, you know, yeah, I, we I'm, always I'm encourage huge... our clients to do that. Yeah, I'm huge time, energy, and confidence, like leveraging. I mean, it should be a task on your calendar, like every so often. Every day. You get busy. Every day, yeah, I like. Think. Hop, I agree with you. I, I'm 100%. But it's so funny. I get the same thing because my clients, you know, and, and I have our collective and I tell them, okay, put all your social media handles. You have this beautiful bio you can share and everybody should be following each other and supporting each other. Like this is a no brainer. And my clients will be like, like either you or your team is really good at liking every post of mine. I'm like, no, that's me. <laughs> like, because I mean, it's like, <laughs> you're my client. I love you. Like, why you wouldn't I sure be there supporting loved. you? Yes. yes. Of course. You want to cheer them on because they've invested in you, in your mm -hmm. program and your services. And every win that they have is a win for you as a coach, yeah. as a service provider. And so it's kind of selfishly a way of celebrating yourself, but also seeing people take that action and implementing yes. the strategies that you've spent time crafting uniquely for them or the course that they've invested in where they are putting into action the thing that they've learned. It's such a special thing. And I love the celebrations. I love cheering other people on. I think it just makes all of us better because when we do that, not only does that engagement help push everybody's content out more, but then yeah. that makes us all more money. And that's what we're here for. At yes. the end of the day, you have a business. You should be talking about your offers. You should be talking to people about what you're selling because I, we talked about this a little bit before we started recording. This is not a charity. This is a business. Yeah. We are here to make money. So you need to stop being afraid to talk about what's going to make you money. And yeah. you know what's interesting about the engagement pieces is that even with ads, mm -hmm. a lot of people think with automation, like, yes, you can take yourself out of a lot of things with automation. However, the human piece always needs to be there, as you both were yeah. saying. And so even yeah. with your ads, people will comment on your ads. Don't leave them hanging. Like, yes. we, oh, I see this all the time and it makes yes. me so mad. Because it's, so, it's so irritating and it's so funny. I screenshot one person. I'm not going to show their name when I do the content piece, but somebody said it's a scam or something. And I was like, this is where you need to go back and either hide hide it or have a conversation, yes. have a like, have the coolest comeback about yeah. what it is that you do and explaining. So when people mm -hmm. do see that and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe somebody said that. It's like the only thing that people see now is that, that it's a scam. So you have to come back and have a conversation with people mm -hmm. about why it's, I mean, I advise my clients a certain way, but it's just like, you know, if it's not a scam, then say what it actually is and like say, oh, I completely yeah. understand why you would think that because a lot of XYZs do do this and it feels very scammy and it sucks, mm -hmm. but- yeah this is what we do X, Y, Z go down the line. And so a lot of people just leave Love their it. ad comments hanging. And even yeah. like, you're not supposed to do that even on organic social media, when you post, go back and engage. So that's, that's important on all aspects. And I want everyone mm -hmm. to understand that, like we said, marketing is compounding, but there are so many similarities between paid and organic. And really the only difference is that you're paying to reach more people and reach yeah. a direct audience versus what you're doing with organic. But the things that you need to do organically are the same things you need to do with ads, except we could just do, get it done a little bit faster. Yeah, no, I agree. And you get notifications that they're commenting on your ads, just like you get notifications about your posts. So like, you know, like, let's show up. No, I'm 100% with you. Well, ladies, I hate that we're out of time. I knew this was going to be an amazing conversation. Maybe I'll help y'all back for a part two where we can go deeper <laughs> into some of these things because I loved it. I love the energy you bring and I love how well you each know what you 
you do and how passionate you are about it. Like, you know, it was an aha for me. I'm a certified high performance coach under Brendan Burchard. And at our last every year you get recertified, right? And I go twice a year just because I want to be really good at what I do. And, and so anyway, he talked about, look, we're paid professionals show up as a paid professional. And I think we live in a world where so many people forget they are paid professionals because it's like, oh, I'm a digital nomad wandering around the world. That's great, but somebody's still paying you to work. So like be a paid professional. So anyway, it's, it's, it's a way I explain and it's a great way of thinking about when you're hiring people too, I think, are they showing up as a paid professional? Yeah. And I just think, I mean, you, you are both like above and beyond showing up as a paid professional. So I want to thank you for that and, and taking what you do so seriously and loving it. So I love it. Any final last words or things to share with the amazing women who are listening to us today? So I will say the most important thing that you can be right now is relatable. People mm -hmm. want to see who you are. And what I have found, especially working with the average Jane of the world, is that Yes, trust absolutely comes first, like Ashley said, and they need to be brought in and see who you are before they can even have any type of discussion or be introduced to what you offer. So a lot of people like myself are transitioning to this relatable content. We actually do jump on trends because we want to bring in the average Jane who is looking for a change, who is looking to connect with someone who can really see her for her. Um, and so if you are someone who is looking to, as I said earlier, perhaps start a side hustle, leave your nine to five, or maybe even just scale your current business or learn how to do engagement better for yourself, we do have the Engagement Academy. And one thing to me that is really special about this program is it's not a membership, but you do get a lifelong Slack community that is always popping off and a monthly Q&A with me for hot seat coaching, totally free for life. And if you are someone who's a little bit further along in your journey and you think it might be time to outsource engagement, our agency is always actively taking on clients. We have five incredible strategists who work across LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook, and we're ready to rock your world because you deserve to make more money. If my whole, my whole, if you take away anything from this, as Ashley said hers earlier, is you deserve to make money. And so yes. if you are afraid mm -hmm. to be putting yourself out there, it's time to talk to someone who will not only teach you how to put yourself out there, but hold your hand as much as you need to get you comfortable with putting yourself out there or take it over for you and put yourself out there for you. Love it. Thank you so much, Emma and Ashley. Oh my gosh, that was so good because honestly, when it comes to fear, we're technically not actually in fight or flight or free. Like we're like there is no saber tooth tiger like no. next to us about to attack us when we don't want to post or when we don't want to engage. So it, it's, it's really mind over matter because mm -hmm. it's business. I think that's the other thing when it comes to business acumen, it's so important that you gather as much business acumen as possible because this is a business. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that running ads might be cheating or that you have to have this in place or that in place. And it's like, Everything that you either have on right now, anything that you're using, anything that you consume, mm. you've probably seen an advertisement for. The goal at the end mm. of the day for business is to make money. And it's not weird. It's not cheating. And it's there's no rite of passage. Because like I said, I was making 47000 <laughs> the first year and I started running ads because I was like, yuck, right? Because it was just so much extra work and I just didn't want to do it. But I just want you to know that there is no rite of passage when it comes to mm. making money in your business, when it comes to it being easier for you or you paying to get something done, you are making a business decision. You are not making, and like, that's when, you know, inviting your husband or your spouse to help you make, no, like it's one thing if you want to get insight and get their opinion or even like get a little confidence boost from them, but to have a spouse help you make business decisions or make or allow you to make business decisions. That's where, when we were talking about pri previously, the profit versus the revenue, this is where it's important for you to understand what a business decision looks like. But with that said, 
I have a Leads to Launch membership. It is an ads membership where I actually walk you through step-by-step step on our calls. We meet weekly because I don't want you to have homework. I want you to work with me and set up your ads. Like I might even take over your computer because I don't want to tell you where to click. Mm. So I might take over your computer and I might set your ad up for you and then tell you just go in and, and add in your copy and add in your, your image, right? Or your video. And then we, the first on one of the first calls with, with Bridget, we, we wrote her script together, her video script together. She just had to do some edits and then record it. Another one, we had her ad set up her first call. Like I don't play any games when it comes to speed because I'm not here to turn you into an ads manager or an ads master i'm here to help you set your ads up get your ads going and then figure help you figure out what the data what we're looking at yeah. and then make decisions based on that data mm. but then also as we go you will learn yes you learn where to click because you get access to my absolutely as course within it but you understand what we're doing and you understand what mm -hmm. to look at and then whenever you decide to bring somebody either in-house or hire someone you are equipped to not be taken advantage of when you're hiring someone. Because yes, we do ads for our clients as that. well. It's a $5,000 a month and it's a four month minimum com commitment yeah. for us. And that is a significant chunk of change. And that's why typically we mm -hmm. only do people who are making $500,000 or more. And if you're making less than that, I really have to look into your business to see if you have something that's working and see what we can do. Because I would rather do a strategy with you or meet with you and help you either figure out whoever's on your team or help you do them together, yeah. then have you pay me a, such a significant amount of money and it dip into your profits. So yep. so to important to meet people where they're at. Yeah. It's, and yeah. so it's so important for me to actually like get to know you, understand who your people are so that we can make sure that all of your content, all of your ads align with that so that we can build out your ad strategy within the program and we get stuff done quickly because again we don't need to yes. be together for three weeks before your ads are up we can have your ads yeah. up the first week so yeah that's just so important for me because a lot of people feel like things take so much time and they don't have to <laughs> yeah no i i love that i'm gonna be quick because oh my gosh we have so much wisdom here and we are over time but it's so valuable. So both the large companies I wrote big checks to that I did not get results from, yeah, three to four weeks to get ads launched. Now, like my friend who's helping me with our Instagram content, he's like, let's get some ads up for you. He and I go on there. We literally launch the ads like an hour and a half. Like we're together, like brainstorming. He writes the copy launch. Oh my gosh more successful than the big checks that I wrote, Love right? That. And I was I like, it. this is amazing. And I mean, he knows enough to know what he's doing with the back end stuff that I don't know, right? So, but I love how you said we get stuff done because one thing I try, you know, with my clients and just women I talk to, it's like, oh, I'm working on my course to launch or I'm working on my ads. What are you working on? You have no idea what's gonna let's work. Just go do launch it. Let's just and do let's it. fix it. <laughs> like let's go. Like let's get yeah, it out. The there. action um, is the best action. Just right. do it. The amount of things that I have launched with like a Google form or yes. like a document yes. that end up coming back with so much art like you oh don't gosh. need the fancy stuff. Just get it out there. Yeah, no, I agree. Oh gosh, we could talk for hours. No, we have this beautiful landing page and our ads, and then we hired an appointment center to do DM ads. The ads that work the best went to the lead form on Facebook. We didn't need any of that other stuff. And I was like, yes. oh great. And this was wasted time, energy, and effort. <laughs> because it could have yeah. even been like a $2,000 to $4,000 um fee if for someone else to either design it and or write the copy for it too yeah. so yeah, yeah. just I do let's you know start start easy well ladies thank you so much i definitely would love to have you all back we can we can have another panel discussing some deeper topics but thank you so much for your time here today and to everyone listening i i'm sure you want more of ashley and emma everything is in the show notes you go to vixengathering.com slash podcast and if you have not just subscribe to the podcast because if you do every tuesday and thursday all of these goodies show up in your inbox it's that simple so definitely go find 
find them on Instagram, find them on their social. It's all listed there and engage with them, see what they're doing. And if you think they're right to work with, reach out. I'm a huge fan. So I love it. Thank you so much, ladies, for being here today. And if you're listening, you know, I always say that the world needs more love. And guess what? Love sometimes is telling your client or friend, just go do it, right? Like quit dragging your feet. Sometimes we need that mama bear energy love where we just kind of push the people we love to do things. So whatever love looks like for you today, let's be authentic, let's be real, and let's show up in love. So thank you, ladies. This has been amazing. Everyone listening, I will talk to you again soon. Thanks again for listening to the podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit subscribe so future episodes are automatically downloaded directly to your device. And if you want access to today's show notes, including links to all the resources we mentioned, visit vixengathering.com slash podcast. Thanks again for listening, and I'll catch you next week for another episode of The Vixen Voice.